The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar broadcast today. My name is Jim Guinan, and I'm an annuity sales director here with Insurance Agency Marketing. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day, um, and uh, hopefully there'll be some information here that is new to you. Our topic today is the IMS 1040 checklist, and I will be uh, walking through some different parts of a 1040 form, tax form, uh, which will help us locate some possible cross-selling opportunities. So I um, want to visit with you about some uh, great ideas there. And before I do, would like to uh, tell you what's new about uh, what's going on here at Insurance Agency Mark. And I do want to mention that we are uh, recording the webinar. So if for some reason you are unable to attend the whole webinar or would just like to review it later, we'll make it available this afternoon. Also, for those of you that are attending, we will be sending out to you the 2018 uh, Tax Facts Guide. Uh, we just revised that this week and um, we will be sending that out to you also this afternoon with the email that you will get um, approximately four or five hours after this webinar is finished. So uh, again, we do appreciate your participation and your time. And with that, let's get started. Uh, I want to talk to you about some things here at Insurance Agency Marketing many of you are very familiar with, but we do have a referred producer program. I don't think that we promote this enough. And this is our way of saying thank you for um, referring other producers to us. So if you know agents out there that are writing life insurance or fixed annuities and uh, they're maybe not happy with where they're at or, or looking for some other opportunities here as the new year begins, let us know who those people are and we'd be very happy to follow up with them. As you can see, we will uh, pay you a bonus when they contract and then as an ongoing bonus as they continue to write. This is unlimited, so uh, you can build an agency this way or perhaps just to uh, uh, make a little extra income from people that are writing, and as they write more, uh, you will also uh, make more. So again, our way of saying thanks to you, uh, we we do spend a big portion of our day recruiting new producers here at Insurance Agency Marketing. Okay, and then as the new producer uh, will write with us here at IMS, you can see the different levels. This is in your their first 180 days of writing business with us, approximately, so first six months. Um, as, the, as an individual would hit those thresholds at the end of that term, this is what you could look to be rewarded. So uh, many people will oftentimes take the cash or a gift card, but there are some other uh, marketing pieces that can be utilized here as a part of that production. So. Again, um, recently, again, reached out to another other IMOs, our competition, and did not find something, you know, in this fashion with our competitors. So I'm very happy to say that we're continuing to offer the new producer bonus going into 2018. Our back office support, I think, here at Insurance Agency Marketing, having worked at another IMO for a number of years and then now here, I can tell you that um, we do a great job. Uh, doesn't mean that we don't continue to improve that, but um, our goal is to try and make uh, what you need to get done to write business and get it issued as seamless as possible. So um, we do have a new business department for both life and annuity. Um, we also help with the quotes. If you're looking at term life quotes, for example, you can get that through our website but you can also visit with a sales manager our paperless contracting I think does save a lot of time for you uh, going forward you can get appointed with future carriers without filling out forms every time again those are just some of the uh, the support that we offer to you our creative department has been very busy um, the individuals that help produce this webinar, who help with the uh, organization and the sending out the invites is also our creative department is helping with uh, building uh, or branding, I should say, your business. Um, so if you're looking at 
ways to market to your clients, to, to recruit to them, ways to put your brand out there, develop a website. Those are things that Josh and Tasia can help you with. Uh, please let them know how they could help you, some ideas. Maybe they can give you some ideas as to ways to do that, um, you know, marketing, ad pieces, email newsletters, or print new print material. I did kind of mention our website a little bit. If you have not been to our website, I would encourage you to look at it. It's been revised again, and um, there's some great tools. I go to the website every day. The way that I use the website, of course, is in helping you with your income rider quotes, um, with searching for products. With 30 companies, it's very difficult to sort uh, different scenarios that we get, especially by state and age. Uh, but by product design and so we have a tool an agent tool on the website that I use quite frequently to help me search for products so when you say to me you know what's a good uh, indexed annuity for example that's not any longer than seven years but rights to age 85 you know I kind of know who all the players are but I may not so again our website helps me helps you help helps you um, there's also of course life term quotes uh, our webinar calendar is out there. Our annuity grid, which is about 40 pages now, uh, we have a copy of that at our desk, but it's made available on the website. So it has a multi-year rate fixed. It's sorted by carriers, sorted by bonus products, sorted by index, sorted by riders. So there's a lot of information that's out there. Um, our newsletters are available, and there's a, a huge resource library that has fact finders and financial calculators that you can use so again what a great resource all right Imes Wealth Management is a newer division a newer company here with us at insurance agency marketing and uh, we developed the, the uh, wealth management side about two years ago and we continue to see that area grow so <clears throat> what isn't required here very simply is that you be a series 65 investment advisor rep and then that means that you would be able to charge a fee for uh, management of those assets so again uh, we see this as quite a growth area for people that have writing business with us for years some that are new some that are looking to grow their business in ways other than just writing fixed annuities so if you have clients that you know that are um, not happy with their retirement dollars and uh, they have the money in mutual funds, it's not performing well, it's not being managed properly. Um, this is an area of growth for you. Also, we do have producers now that are referring those clients to us, but don't have the securities license needed. So again, my suggestion would be if you have interest in that or more information that you'd like to get about um, you know, what how can that work for your clients and work for you I just launched a poll question here answer yes if you'd like to get some information or no if you don't care for that again many of you may be in a part in your a, a position in your career that you don't want to get involved in that and that's understandable but if you do have interest in it would like to get more information um, I can have that sent over to Charles or, or Mike Hansen or Joan and they could uh, perhaps get you some information or, or give you a phone call and explore that opportunity a little bit further. Again, this is a growing area for us, and regardless of whether the Department of Labor ruling goes into effect in July of 2019 or not, uh, we will continue to grow this part of the business, and we've already seen that. We have um, quite a bit of money under management for a startup two years ago. Uh, appreciate your responses to that, and then, and after the webinar is over, um, we will be reaching out to you and uh, answering any questions or needs that you may have about uh, Imes Wealth Management. Okay, moving on to the Academy. Uh, we do now have an Academy date. It is March 28th through the 30th of this year. That will be our next two-day training. And uh, so the registrations are available. I believe we sent an email out about it last week, um, but you can 
you know after this uh, webinar too we will send you a link and um, it'll have a little more information than what's appearing on your screen about uh, what is covered we can get you a sample agenda uh, again the agenda does change a little bit from training to training and uh, if you would like to register it'll it'll have an opportunity to do so so this is what we look for in our life and annuity Academy individuals that are writing fixed annuities now or life insurance um, it is not a beginner training, so this is not uh, designed to help people that are um, new to the business, um, have been away, away from the business for a long time and haven't been selling. So um, we are looking for active writers. We do ask that you be contracted um, with one of our top companies. And again, this will be March 28th through the 30th. Um, it is designed to help you grow the business. It's for people that are, you know, active in the market. So we usually look for 35 to 40 individuals. Some of you on this webinar have probably been to the training and, and you can tell that it is very good. Uh, we update it and our goal, of course, is to help you increase your business and increase that business with us. Um, so I'm going to launch a poll question if you'd like to get a registration or just Maybe you would just like to have uh, some questions answered about that. We'd be glad to do so. So respond to that question if you have interest. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, we do plan on having um, most likely at least one more and possibly two more of these this year. There will be one at our brokerage office in the Omaha, Nebraska area most likely through the year. This particular one is at Athene's home office in West Des Moines. But again, the dates are March 28th through the 30th. That's a Wednesday through Friday. So uh, we certainly appreciate any interest there. And again, we have to have a registration in. We'll ask you questions like, what kind of premium have you been writing? What carriers you appointed with? Are you securities licensed? Things like that. Those are all things we want to know. And um, so we appreciate your response to, to that. Okay, and before I get into the, uh, the topic today, I did want to mention that um, we did finish up our qualification period, so to speak, for our marketing summit. Uh, that was at the end of 2017 our um, social and educational summit will be held March 25th through the 28th. This will be the largest attended destination that IMS has ever had in the history of the company. So um, should be should be a great attendance. Um, it will be again, like I said, in Scottsdale, Arizona, you can read what's on the screen here. We have not determined when or um, how exactly our next marketing summit will be so I don't have any new information for you about where that will be and when but um, I know that there are plans for another another uh, destination again due to, due to the DOL um, I'm um, does feel that we need to make this not just a social event, but that it be also educational. So as you see, um, but should be a fantastic trip. Uh, supposed to be one of the best resorts in the United States. So with that, I want to uh, move on here. So let's talk a little today about the IMS 1040 checklist. And um, the reason I um, developed this webinar was because over the years I know a lot of producers uh, have used the 1040 the tax form as a way to uh, learn more about a client's financial situation uh, some of you like me I'm kind of reluctant to ask for that but uh, it does depend on the client the situation and um, after all if you look at the suitability form on any annuity application 
you'll see that it's a fact finder. And so we have to find out certain things and we have to ask questions now about financials that we never used to have to ask. And I think that's a good thing. Um, but there's a, there's a full range of questions now on an annuity application that um, this type of uh, question and answer will will also uh, supplement that. So uh, when I want to start by saying when when we think this is a good opportunity to use or when this could be used, I guess would be uh, some ideas here would be on client reviews when you're sitting down with clients that you haven't seen for a while or maybe you have regular annual reviews with them um, they've they know you um, they trust you and this would be a good opportunity to um, learn a little bit more about their situation so uh, annual reviews maybe if you have a very qualified uh, referral uh, or a referral I guess and, the, and they're qualified or they the trust factors have already been built in you know this may be your way of, of developing the fact find after a sale has been made, you know, this might be a good thing to ask for the uh, tax return. After a sale, uh, they, they trust you maybe as part of your presentation or as closing part of your uh, fact finder is to, you know, ask for the tax return. They may ask you why. And, of course, you know, to learn a little bit more about where they're paying taxes and that. Uh, on their on their assets um, again it's a it's a trust factor um, if you develop a um, if you have your own presentation with many many of you do uh, this could be a part of it certainly so let's talk a little bit about some of the features or the the uh, areas on the tax return that can help you generate um, future sales again that's the goal here is we want to learn about the situation and how can we um, how can we throw out recommendations without knowing some more things about that client so the first thing would be you know asking looking at a w-2 form which isn't the, the tax return but the w-2 form if we look at um, the differences in line one and three, for example, those will indicate a participation in employer's 401k plan. Um, and then the next line, it says box 13 indicates active participation in an employer's retirement plan. So that's a good conversation about what's being put away for retirement. In my mind, it also uh, brings up the topic of an in-service non-hardship withdrawal, which um, some of you have been on a webinar that I talk about 401k prospecting. So if we know that they have a plan, um, especially if the individual you're sitting across the table from is over 59 and a half, um, we can talk about the opportunities of an in-service non-hardship withdrawal, which is uh, is actively um, prospecting monies that can be moved without penalty um, into another qualified plan, perhaps a traditional IRA um, in a fixed annuity, for example. So if they're active in a plan, certainly, um, you know, find out, what kind of 401k plan are you know how is that performing are you participating have you increased that participation um, if the company that they work for is rather large it's probably 90 percent or higher chance that they have an in-service withdrawal feature so um, that would be something to ask your prospect is are you aware of a in-service non-hardship withdrawal feature on your retirement plan and what that does is it allows you to reposition um, portions of their retirement money into another option and they may want to do so because of the benefits of a fixed product so it may have an income rider it has a guaranteed fixed rate perhaps it could be just a safer alternative with a portion of the money where the current plan doesn't have a fixed annuity like 
strategy. Okay, so and before I move on, I don't know, um, many of you may know, but maybe not, all the products that we work with here at Insurance Agency Marketing. Now, I'm in the annuity department, um, but we we help we talk a lot about fixed annuities and life insurance, but we do also have disability, we have med supplement, Medicare supplement plans, we have some long-term care companies, um, in particular single premium whole life, but we have all of the lifeline, traditional term, whole life, final expense products in particular, uh, UL, index UL, single premium whole life, single premium index life, and for annuities, anything that's fixed, traditional products. So as we go through here, as we go through some of the options, um, there's a lot of products that we offer here at Insurance Agency Marketing that can be utilized, and many of you probably know about, well, yeah, we have fixed annuity in life, but we do have DI cares. One other one I missed, hybrid products, so annuity and life long-term care products. Okay, so um, next section would be the address line. Nothing big here, really, but um, one of the things that comes up on here is that second or third line down. It says, um, well, looking at changes of address, but then it says, do you have enough life insurance to pay off real estate debt should something happen to you? So here would be an opportunity, you know, maybe just a conversation starter about, you know, do you have enough life insurance to cover all your debts, including your mortgage. Um, again, there's so many areas here that you wouldn't want to necessarily ask the same question on each section, but you're going to see a cross-selling question here as we go forward for annuity, for life. Again, property casualty, we don't market it here at our brokerage, but I know many of you do have property casualty or or maybe have a division of that business or you refer that business to someone. So uh, again, most of our cross-selling opportunities are going to come in the products I mentioned, more life and annuity than, than anything else. But um, okay, filing status would be the next section. Uh, again, looking at changes over the last three years, some questions to ask. Since your recent marriage, for example, have you reviewed and updated beneficiary designations on life insurance? Uh, I guess more importantly, if there's been a change in filing status, um, you know, are you thinking about purchasing additional life insurance, disability, or long-term care insurance for yourself or your spouse? Do you know a tax-deferred annuity can be integrated in your retirement plan? That's one of my favorite cross-selling lines. Uh, but again, uh, those are, we have another member in the family, um, or there's been a change. Maybe there's been a divorce, which that's the next section coming up. But, um, I think it's always important. We, we, everything that we talk with our clients doesn't necessarily always generate commissions for us or generate a sale. But uh, the, I think that's very important to talk about reviewing and updating beneficiary. And I, I think about a client I had years ago that we were going through a fact find. We didn't go through tax return, but went through fact find, and that question came up. And I asked her if she had updated her, her beneficiaries or her will, her beneficiary. And she said, well, yeah. And I said, well, do you have it here? And she actually went and got it out of the other room and came in and discovered that she had not updated her will since her husband had passed and been gone for 10 years. So she said, I'm going to get that done. And, um, you know, it was a few years after that that she passed and she had named all of her nieces and nephews as beneficiaries, but it had been, it would have been a mess had she not changed that. So I think it's important that we ask about that. And then furthermore, those are referral possibilities for us. Okay, and then again, there's the questions about um, if there was a, um, a divorce, it's not just recent marriage, but there could be a divorce too that would change um, the financial picture. Okay, and dependents and exemptions, line six. You know, what to look for, um, children, grandchildren that would be dependents with special needs, 
Um, again, a, a question that will come up or could come up, should the unthinkable happen to you or your spouse, do you have enough life insurance to cover your dependents' needs if one of you unexpectedly passed away? So um, <clears throat> that's always an important question to ask. Uh, so that section right there, those would be some opportunities, um, among others, that could be asked. Make you know, make some, uh, get some ideas going about what could, what we could do for them. And if you're uh, on the appointment and you have a computer, you could go to our website and get a term quote, for example, pretty easily. Um, it's very easy to go in, and you'd actually get top carriers on the term quote engine. You could get up to 10 quotes, I think. So just to give them an idea what that would cost. Wages and salary would be another section here that we could focus on, um, which is uh, line seven. And it says, compare, you know, an idea, compare last three tax returns to identify increased income going forward. Um, you know, questions to ask. One of the first ones, have you considered a tax deferral opportunity provided by annuity products and cash value life insurance? So again, as an individual is making more money, they should think about saving more money, hopefully saving some of that, and uh, certainly an annuity, or perhaps cash value, uh, a UL plan, are some ideas for ways to tuck that money away. Um, so as they, again, increases in income, great opportunity for us. Next section, taxable interest, line 8A, and tax exempt interest, line 8B. So questions to ask about information that would show up on those lines would be, again, have you considered moving some of the savings into tax deferred annuity products, cash value life insurance? Did you know you may be able to generate higher cash flow from an annuity than from bonds? So that could either be by penalty free withdrawals, it could be by annuitizing a contract, buying an income product, for example. Uh, but again, how do we eliminate taxable interest? How do we reduce taxable interest? An annuity is a strong possibility because that those assets are now tax deferred. Next section, talking about alimony. Um, alimony received. And uh, I was just reading this morning uh, before the webinar, actually, that um, with this tax law change that um, alimony will be now not a tax deduction in many states, and it will not be taxable for the recipient. I believe that's what I, what I read. So there's a lot of changes. I'm not sure if that goes fully into effect in 2018, but uh, that will change things a little bit here. Um, question to ask down a couple lines, if life insurance wasn't specified in your settlement, would you consider purchasing life insurance? So whether an individual is getting married or getting divorced, it's good to review the life insurance needs and, of course, retirement needs. Business income or loss, uh, line 12 and Schedule C. So we want to identify the type of business entity that's there and how can we help individuals with that so if an, somebody that you're seeing here sitting across from the table has a business uh, one of the things that I think of a lot because I prospect and I help agents with this is the small business pension program through one of our top companies so if you're if you're meeting with someone and, and, and something appears there that they have a small business a small business that is if it's a, it's a large business uh, I'm not sure where you go there, but if it's a small business of 40 employees or less, we have a carrier that has a great pension program. And what's great about it is that you don't have to be the expert. So you could then say to that individual, you know, have you done anything for your business retirement? Or if you're a sole proprietor, what have you done to um, 
help for retirement and reduce taxes for your small business. And at that point, you know, or either there or later set an appointment to get a census or a fact find on that business, you submit it into this uh, uh, company that we have, which is American National, and their pension department will take it from there. They'll review the, review the plan, come back with a proposal, and guess what? You now have um, another piece of business to write. And any of the employees in that are your prospects too. So again, um, cross-selling opportunity here. Capital gains and losses, line 13. Uh, this shows gains and losses that indicate the client or prospect aggressively invests. Um, you know, again, are you happy with how that investment is done? You know, maybe feel out for could that be an opportunity for something that's safe but has some upside potential. So a fixed index product might be of interest with a portion of your retirement here because you don't have to risk the principal, but you can still participate in some growth of the market. Um, also, have you considered using permanent life insurance as a conservative part? So there's another option there too. It doesn't just have to be into fixed annuities. All right, uh, moving on here, uh, IRA and pension distributions, that's lines 15 and 16. And what we're looking for here is if the RMD is made because of age, that's your required minimum distribution. So on qualified money, if they're making an RMD, um, knowing the, uh, the age of the person and that distribution, knowing the age and the amount of the distribution, you'll really be able to show the, the really determine the approximate value of the IRA and other qualified uh, accounts. So, you know, for example, at age 70, their RMD represents about three and a half percent of the, uh, the total value. So again, that'll tell you about what they have. And if they haven't told you, that'll tell you what, what they have in those qualified accounts. So here's the question that follows. If you're not using that, what are you or what are you doing with your required distribution that you get? Do you just put it in the savings account? Do you put it in a money market? If not, would you consider applying some of those funds towards an annuity or life insurance, for example? Uh, I know that Mark in our life department tells us that a great source of single premium whole life sales are from RMDs because uh, it's a required distribution. A lot of individuals don't really need that. They have to take it and um, repositioning that back into another safe vehicle like an annuity or perhaps buying a single premium life product. Okay, moving on. Um, rental, real estate, royalties, partnerships, S corporations and trust line 17 and schedule E, I guess. And it wasn't aware of that. It says cash flow that can be used to buy an annuity or additional life insurance. Again, you know, this is income that's coming in. May not be something that the individual necessarily relies on or relies on for their livelihood. So it may be extra income that could be used for a number of things. It could be used for uh, purchasing additional life insurance or cash value life insurance, putting into an investment like a fixed annuity. Um, a question here, do you know life insurance can be used to fund a buy-sell agreement that immediately pays your survivors should you die unexpected? Again, those are great questions to ask. You know, so what is the income to be used for, I guess, would be the first question. Another line here is line 26, moving expenses. Again, sort of a, uh, uh, would indicate, you know, a new residence, uh, much like a change of address. So really no new questions here that you wouldn't have asked already, perhaps. Uh, line 32 is your IRA deduction. And... IRA deduction 
would be line 32. So what to look for? Determine if they're taking advantage of a tax-deductible contribution to an IRA. If there is no deduction, uh, use the opportunity to ask why. It may be that they already have a retirement plan in place, and so the IRA is not deductible. Um, so this could be an opportunity to perhaps talk about a Roth IRA um, or a non-qualified annuity. So if they're not able to deduct it, um, it's usually because they have a retirement plan and um, so they can still make the contribution, but a lot of individuals won't, but there are alternatives, as you probably all know. Okay, and then itemized deductions, which is line 40 and schedule A, and so this is uh, yearly contributions to a favorite charity. Uh, good question to ask here. Did you know you can purchase a life insurance policy listing your charity as a beneficiary? And then federal income tax withheld and refund, line 61 and 72. So this will tell you the size of the refund and see if it needs to be adjusted. Maybe they have been getting refunds and they like that. They use that every spring to pay off a bill or a credit card or they just like to get a, a check back to use it for whatever they want. Um, but an opportunity here would be to withhold, to adjust that so that um, they get more of a check, you know, each month, each week, and they have more that's coming in throughout the year to use to purchase other things. Maybe that's a way to free up to buy the premium or to pay for premiums on a life policy. Um, also, you know, maybe instead of using all of that in the spring for just to go back into putting into a liquid account, you know, that would be the way to maybe purchase a fixed annuity or a flex premium product where you don't have to have as much initial deposit. So again, these are, these are some ideas as you go through. Uh, I think it's good to have these, um, these questions in mind. Um, may not want to ask all of these. Some of these are, are uh, redundant. In other words, the same question comes about, but there are opportunities as, as you sit down. And again, you're, if, if an individual has their tax return, I feel they trust you and they trust me to uh, present that information. So uh, they're not going to be, a, they're not going to be bashful about answering some questions, I wouldn't think. So some additional questions here as I wrap up. Additional questions to ask after the review of the tax return would be, uh, do you have any IRAs that you're not receiving distributions from? Okay. Um, so that would be someone who's pre-70, most likely. But uh, do you have IRAs that you're not receiving distributions from? Do you have any old 401k plans that haven't been rolled into an IRA? So that could be from a previous employer or um, just a recent retirement or career change and they hadn't done anything yet with it. Uh, do you have any existing 401k plans that you're still contributing to? What's the opportunity here? In-service withdrawals. or um, just, you know, learning a little bit more about their um, profile for retirement. Another question would be, do you have any annuities, cash value life insurance or long-term care policies that we haven't already discussed? Again, um, that could be variable annuities or fixed annuities. It could be old whole life insurance plans, uh, plans that aren't competitive anymore that we're paying premiums into for life insurance or long-term care for that matter. So again, the, it, the whole idea I think you understand is we want to try and find ways to develop not only a better relationship with our clients, but also look for ways to help them that we have uh, the ability to, to offer those products and services and uh, make some money at it. Uh, so I do appreciate your time today. If you have any questions, um, if you can type those in, or if you want to call or email me, I'd appreciate it. And uh, 
I hope that uh, you have a good, productive 2018, and that uh, that we can continue to provide um, service here at our brokerage and help you with your annuity and life sales, as well as the other product lines here at Insurance Agency Marketing. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.